Hello students, today's lesson is experimental technique in watercolor. I'm going to show you different ways to lay paint down on the paper and move it around once it's there. I taped off this piece of paper with painter's tape, which is, well, actually it's artist tape, which is different than painter's tape. Painter's tape is usually blue and it's for walls. This is specifically for paper. I like the white tape better. The blue interferes with my color perception. So I laid this tape down and I used this tool, which is really for bookmaking, to press down the seams. You don't want, you want a clean seam, so you press down the edges so it gets nice and tight. The other thing I did was I scored these lines. So where the tape is, it's gonna be white because the paint's not gonna go under there. So I scored the lines in between so, so that I can get some texture when I put the paint down. And I, I did it pretty quickly. On this one, I used the book tool. On this one, I used a palette knife. And on this one, I used a cuticle stick. So this way, when I put the paint down, the paint's gonna go into those grooves a little bit more, depending on which paint I use. And I'll be able to see which of the three tools gave different effects. I'm gonna start with this first section over here. I'm gonna lay down a little wash of magenta. I toned it down a little bit. I used quinacridone rose, deep scarlet, and what else did I put in there? I think I put a little bit of blue, a little bit of Aussie red gold, because I don't, I don't want it really bright. So I tone that down. And then I'm going to use, I have to block this off because I'm going to spritz. I'm going to use alcohol and see what happens. So do you see how it, it pushed it away, it separated it? And then it's kind of blending back in, but over time it may keep moving and turning. The other thing I want to put in there is maybe some color. I'm going to go in this blue and use my toothbrush and splatter. Whoops, I have a drip. Drips are okay. So now it's interacting with that alcohol a little bit more too. So it's going to keep doing its thing for a little while, but it's an interesting effect. This next section, I am going to, I think I'm going to use a bunch of different techniques in here. The first thing I'm going to do is lay down some corn syrup. Whoa, that got thick. I think I can water that down just a little bit. So I use regular old cornstarch and water and I made a bit of a gravy. And I'm going to lay a blob of that down here and a blob of it down here. Ooh, it's okay, it's spilled. That's okay. Clean that brush out. Then I'm going to paint right alongside of it. And do you see how it's feathering and going in there? It's really quite lovely. Nice. So now I have these weird hard edges. I need to figure out, oops, look at what's going on. This is gonna go run into my taped part. So I need to just get some of that liquid up. So watercolor is this beautiful dance between skill and intention and happy accidents. So you're constantly trying things with intention and then evaluating them and readjusting when they don't work. Or when they do something that you don't expect, just evaluating, oh, I like that, I can live with that. So these edges are kind of weird for me, so I'm gonna come in here with a little bit of water and a little bit of paint, maybe. And I don't know what I'm trying to do, but I don't need to know. So that's okay. So 
So in this blob in the middle, I'm going to try something. I'm going to do some spritzing, but this time I'm going to use water. So I have to block off my paint paper again. I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to spritz with water. And into that spritz, I'm just going to drop some color. And see how it goes. Oh, it dried pretty quickly. I'm going to try a color that spreads a little bit more too. Yeah, so you can see, I'm going to do a one more spritz. You can see how that red is, is traveling a little bit more than that green. That green's just kind of sitting there. So every color will do something differently. Well there, oh that's an accident, so I never thought to do that. Rolling your brush handle could make things happen. Oh, maybe that's exactly what I needed. I wonder what would happen if I rolled my brush all the way across here. Oh, that's, that's such a great mess. I love it. So this is becoming very tactile because of the corn syrup. That's not really something that I'm used to with watercolor, but I like it. And what else, what else can I do to this? I need to wash my hands a little bit. I'm going to try spritzing some color. Or not spritzing, um, flinging. I'm going to fling some color on here. And maybe it'll be turquoise. So satisfying. So that is totally not what I expected to do right there. And yay, that's fantastic. So I'm going to add a little bit of water to my magenta over here. I don't want it to be that dark because I can't really see what's going on with that paint. So I'm going to add water and get that toned down a little bit. Get this nice and wet. So let me see here. Grab a liner and I'm just going to pull that through there. Whoops, another mistake, yay! So that does something interesting, and I'm going to take my brush, or not my brush, I'm going to take a sponge. And I'm going to load this sponge up with some paint. And just come through here. Ooh, I like that. I'm going to leave that be. I have one square left. I'm going to lay down some green. So I have green here. I want to pull that over here. Hmm, yeah, green. That'll work. Oops, it's kind of a greenish brown. I think some of it's separated in there and some of it is more green. Sometimes that happens. It'll separate in the pot and depending on how you stab it, it'll change. I'm gonna drop some salt down there so everybody knows about that little trick. With salt, you wanna be strategic. You wanna use it sparingly and skillfully. You don't want people to look at your painting and say, oh, look, 
they use salt so I can add a little bit more texture in here too or at least try sometimes you want to just pull your your brush apart nice and as that dries it's going to change so I have these two I have three lines left so I have to decide what colors do I want to put in there and I'm thinking brown would work um, let's see I can experiment a little bit with this comb brush so that could be an effect that would work really well but I have lines under there and I'm not altogether sure that that texture is going to show up like I want it to. You might not be able to see it, but I might be able to see it. Oh, I kind of like that. So I'm going to I'm going to go with it. I'm going to use more pressure in some places so it kind of covers it up and go both ways just like I did. Just like I did when I was laying those marks down. So, watercolor has a mind of its own and it's gonna do stuff you don't want it to do and playing around like this is a good way to kind of surrender into that aspect of watercolor so that you can learn to be in a call and response with it like a dance and remember when you were in middle school and you went to your first dance and how scared you were because you were so self-conscious and as soon as you're not self-conscious then you can be wild and let loose and have fun and be free and then that's where the fun is so there you go kind of an interesting painting i hope you can play and have fun like this at home